it, then you can bring in your anchor of mindfulness. And the first part is just accepting. A is for acceptance. So I'm just going to accept that I'm feeling a strong emotion. I may not like it, but I'm bringing acceptance to it. And then B is for your breath. Now I'm going to take my attention from whatever it was that was overwhelming back to the breath. And I'm just going to stay there centered for a moment, which is C. So A, B, C. So that's a really quick technique that you can use if you notice that you feel triggered or you feel like something was upsetting you. The mind is very, very powerful. When we are in the middle of a struggle, it's even more powerful and it makes things seem worse than it actually is. And there's this propensity to always just want to plan in the future and to problem solve and to look ahead, especially when you're dealing with this struggle of infertility or to the past, what hasn't worked, what went wrong, what's happening. And so we let go of both of those paths and we come back to the present. And that is using it as an anchor. And yes, the next moment may feel overwhelming again. And so then you bring yourself back. If you continue to practice it, bringing yourself back in an accepting way, what happens is it strengthens your mindfulness muscle. So imagine it being like a muscle. Like most of us are rigged not to be present. Our attention wanders over 50% of the time. So it's really difficult. And then when we're in a struggle, many of our thoughts are associated with the struggle. So it's exasperated. So that's where we need to take control and mindfulness helps to bring us back. So we don't need to sit on a yoga mat and to close our eyes and breathe. And that's traditionally what people think mindfulness is. It's something that we can incorporate in our day-to-day -day life with the things that we're already doing. For example, I'm sure many of you like to drink coffee in the morning or tea, but I, I, I anticipate most of you will just, you know, do your work, scroll your emails, drink the coffee, do other things. But imagine just drinking the coffee, putting the phone away, just taking the coffee, putting it in front of you, letting your thoughts go. So we're not thinking, we're tapping into our senses, the smell of the coffee, the taste of the coffee when it enters our mouth the feeling of the cup on our hand. And we're just noticing our experience and we're just letting it unfold. We're not thinking, although your mind will activate because the mind is always trying to activate. So your mind will think, okay, well, we need to check our emails or we need to get to work by a certain time or we need to put that out for dinner or I have to pick this up. And that's your mind activating. And when you notice it activate, your job is to see if you can notice where it's going, label it, and then bring it back, back to the tea or coffee. In the group that I run, this is the time that I crack out the raisins. And it's actually a very traditional meditation where everyone takes one raisin and we all hold the raisin like this ugly little mundane fruit in our palm of our hands and we pretend that we're literally one with the raisin and that's where our attention is nothing else matters and we're trying to harness our attention in the present moment so a raisin is really boring and our mi mind is is going to wander. It's not going to be able to focus for very long on the raisin. So when the mind wanders, we just bring it back to the raisin. When we can notice where the mind wandered, we can label it and then bring it back. So it's very much a reprieve. It's a way to clear our minds and it, it's a way to offer some space between yourself and what it is you're experiencing. 
so that you can see things more clearly and that you can respond in a different way. I was just listening to Morgan's talk before and she was talking about knee-jerk reactions. So uh, oftentimes that's how we that's how we're we we go about like we're just knee jerk and we respond to things very very quickly and when it comes to our fertility it's very much heightened for us so we need to recognize this and use mindfulness to help bring ourselves back so we can create some space again between ourselves and what's happening because oftentimes we become enmeshed with it and we start to think that we are the problem and then our sense of self as the problem dominates the journey and we're not our infertility so it's really trying to use different language and change the way you're relating to yourself and it's not an easy practice but the thing is the more you do it the better you're going to feel and the more in control of your thoughts you're going to feel because what happens is after you spend 10 minutes a day for let's say five days just trying to be present in those 10 minutes after those five days you have created a new neural circuitry in your mind that will come alive when you're not doing that mindfulness when you're just dealing with your ordinary day-to-day -day life, you're going to be more present because of that practice. So, so it's, it's a, you, you know, it's something that you can, like I said, do with the things you're already doing in your life. So if you, you know, are having the coffee or eating a raisin or washing the dishes or sweeping, or folding the laundry. It's really just allowing your mind to be there with your body, tapping into your senses. You're not thinking about anything. You're not trying to solve anything. You're just being. So that's mindfulness. And so let's talk now. Does anyone have any questions or comments about mindfulness before I move on to self-compassion. We don't have any questions that have come in yet, Amira, so we're good to keep going. Okay, so let's move on to self-compassion. So self-compassion is really no different than compassion. And compassion is tuning into the suffering of others. I was actually, I went on a, a social distancing walk with a friend of mine yesterday and we were quite far apart and because of that she tripped and she hurt her knee and my heart sank when it happened and I felt, I felt sorry for her suffering and, and that's compassion, it's feeling the suffering of someone else. But the important thing is, is that you need to also be included in that circle of compassion. So really getting in touch with your own suffering and allowing it to be okay and tending to it. And that's what self-compassion is. There's a psychologist, her name's Christina Neff, and she's done a lot of research on self-compassion. And it's really, really fascinating. And as I was delving into it, I was like this talk is going to go well because no matter what I say, if I screw up, I'm just going to offer myself compassion because I'm just a human being like you are. So we, when we bring it back to that, that we're just human beings and that we all experience suffering, it becomes really, it really touches the core of our common humanity and it makes us feel less isolated. What I find so interesting is it's really easy to have compassion for someone else, but then it seems like it's so difficult for us to have it for ourselves. We're often so critical to, and judgmental, and I think we're taught that to motivate ourselves, we need to be 
critical and work really hard, but I believe we can also motivate ourselves from coming from a more gentle, nurturing place. So self-compassion is having feelings of kindness and compassion towards yourself. And it's recognizing that you're suffering. And it's recognizing that one in six couples are struggling with infertility and that you're not alone. And so, yeah, I was saying in the groups, what I noticed are when I have these women come together, it's so easy for them to, to feel compassion towards each other when you hear your story or someone else struggling and you, you feel compassion for them. And then oftentimes that compassion reverberates back to them. So that's the benefit of being involved in a group. It's really seeing the same thing that you're struggling with in somebody else. So getting back to self-compassion. So self-compassion is really, actually compassion means to sit in the suffering with. So imagine if we can just sit with our own suffering and allow it to come through us and for us to just be okay and accepting of it. We may not like it and we may want things to be different and we may fight against it in some way, but sometimes when we can just offer ourselves compassion during that time, it can be, it can, it can just change the way it moves through our bodies and through our minds and it can create resilience and like, we, we feel more energized and ready for whatever is to come next. So it's a whole sort of state of mind. And I think what I'll do after is I'm gonna give Carolyn some resources that I, that I use in my groups. And Christina Neff um, has done a lot of different research on the topic and the benefits are just amazing and you will find the benefits in your own experience if you just try to be a little bit more compassionate to yourself and notice when things are happening that you are resisting or feeling depleted and just coming back to that place that you're a human being and life isn't perfect and things happen that are very difficult for all of us. And that's what makes us the same and different. And the way we can tend to ourselves is different. So I would like to now move into a little meditation that I think can be helpful and bring this together to help you feel some self-compassion. But before I do that, does anyone have any comments or anything they want to share? We haven't had any comments or questions coming okay. in yet, Amira. I okay. think everybody's just enjoying learning. Okay, great. And listening. Great. So just gonna ask that you sit back in your chair this is a meditation, it's called A Moment of Self-Compassion, and it was actually inspired by Christina Neff. And just sit back in your chair, and you can keep your eyes open or close them, just find a comfortable position, relax your face and shoulders, just allow yourself to let go of thoughts, and anything that's on your mind, just sink into the moment, breathing easily and naturally, just noticing your breathing, feeling the air go into your lungs and out, just sensing your breath in this moment. 
Now bring some awareness to some emotional discomfort. Maybe you can connect to a thought earlier in the day or a feeling, just some discomfort, maybe a sadness, maybe overwhelm. Just try to feel where this Discomfort is located in your body. Maybe you want to take your hand and place it over your heart or your womb, just gently. Let's acknowledge what you are experiencing in the here and now. This is a moment of suffering. This hurts. This is stress. Just breathing and being aware of the discomfort. Now acknowledging that suffering is a part of our common humanity. You could say something like, I'm not alone. We all struggle. Other people feel this way. Sensing into your breath and acknowledgement that suffering is just a part of life. What do you need to hear from yourself? Is there a message of kindness that you can say? May I be kind to myself? May I give myself the compassion that I need? May I accept myself as I am? May I learn to accept myself as I am? Just allow the messages of kindness to settle into your body. Feeling renewed and rejuvenated. You've allowed yourself to feel some benefits of self-compassion. And when you're ready, you can bring your attention back to the room. So that's, that's self-compassion in action. And you can see it's a very supportive and encouraging approach and the easiest way to tap into it is just trying to feel it for somebody very close to you and then have that mindful awareness that you are also included in that circle of care to give yourself self that TLC that will help you feel balanced, help you feel calm, and less stressed. And it's not a passive approach. It's not, I'm just not gonna do anything all day because I'm being loving and giving myself compassion. It's really focused on your health, wellness, and being just whole holistic well being. So I encourage you guys to see how you can start to bring in some compassion and mindfulness into your journey. And you'll find that it makes things a little bit easier because there's many aspects on this road that are not in our control. And 
when we can let go of the things we can't control and tune into the things we can, we're gonna feel much better. And this is one of the things that we can tune into. So actually, I just saw a question. And she asked about the next group. And actually, we have a group starting tomorrow evening at 7.30 and it goes till nine and we meet for six weeks in the evening. And we go over many different mind-body techniques that address feeling better in general. And nobody knows what the future holds. And I know now is a particularly stressful time with all the uncertainty. And so I like to use this time to make ourselves strong and whole so that when things do reopen, we can get back into it and start to feel like we're managing better and, and we're on the second phase of our journey. This is, this is a break that the universe has offered us and we need to try to make the best of it. So we can sort of put aside our timeline, even though I know that's so dear to our hearts and take it day by day and checking in with ourselves. What do I need in this moment? What do I need today? What can I offer myself that's better than criticism and judgment? So I'd like to again open this up to and that's another reason about talking to the computer is I prefer it to be interactive and hear people's thoughts and it's hard when I'm just talking and talking. So I encourage you guys to ask questions about mindfulness. If you have any, you have any questions about the mindful fertility series that starts tomorrow evening, I'm happy to answer. There are a couple spaces left. Um, Mira, how does someone register for your uh, program if they so want I to? So I actually, I run the group with another fertility warrior, Sarah Clark, and she takes the registration. So you would have, I can give you her contact if you don't have it. And she, she will take all the information and set you up. So if someone wants to go to, to register tonight or tomorrow morning, how would they find that information? They can, e they can email me and I can pass them on to Sarah. Okay. Yeah, I have okay. a link. I can send it to you as well. Great. Um, and is your email on your website? Yeah. Okay. And it's healinginfertility. Yeah. Amira at healinginfertility.ca. Okay. Amira at healinginfertility.ca. So write that email down if you're interested in connecting with Amira. And these programs run um, pretty frequently. I know yeah. that we, we post them on our social media every few months. So if you're not able to make this session, please know that these sessions do happen. Um, and you can check out Healing and Fertility on Facebook and, and Instagram and also Fertility Matters. So we work um, together to help promote that program. Thank you. That's awesome. And I'm so excited to, to start a new journey tomorrow evening. Yeah, that'll be really exciting. It's a good time, I think, for people to um, do something productive. I hate to use that word because um, I feel like we're all being productive in the way in the ways that we can during this sort of COVID waiting period. But if you're looking for something to help move you towards, you know, um, balance, a ba balance, equilibrium. Time, that's a great term. Um, it would be an amazing opportunity for people to join in there. Yeah. I'm just going to check on Facebook. I don't think we have any Facebook comment or questions. Um, someone said this is really relax so relaxing. Thank you. A couple of comments. Thank you for doing this, Amira. That's really great. Um, if anybody has, Amira, in, so in conclusion, um, do you have some last thoughts or ideas for people as they uh, kind of wind down their evening? Well, where I am, I'm in, I'm on in the Atlantic provinces. So it's not after nine o'clock for me right now. Wow. Yeah. I think just, you know, taking some time to think about the things I've talked about and 
making a commitment to, you know, reconnect to yourself. I, I, I think you're right. I don't think the word productive is a good one. I think, I think a lot of us are, you know, feeling like we need to be productive and do different things because we're maybe we're doing different work or we're just not doing our day-to-day -day normal routine. And I think we need to embrace this time and really it's, things are going to go back soon they will eventually go back. I don't know if it's going to be soon, but they will go back and you're going to be driving and looking for a parking spot and in traffic and waking up early and you're going to miss this time. So it's actually, it's special. And, and so let's make the best of it. And, you know, we can't get it back and we're still going ahead to, you know, where we want to go. Time is still passing. So we can be happy during this time too. And we can come back to ourselves and self-care and self-nurture and, and fill the vessel that one day will create. Yeah. That's a great way to put it. Great time to, um, like you said, give yourself some self-love, some grace, um, to take the time to you know, get into a better space so that when the doors of the clinics open again, and they will, um, you know, you'll be in a, a more balanced um, place to continue or to start your fertility journey. Right. Right. We can't control this. We have to just let go of that and, and create the new, a, a new plan and open up to it and allow ourselves to open up to it. Absolutely. Okay, so we don't have any. Uh, Lucinda on Zoom says amazing words. Thank you so much. I agree, Lucinda. I think that, that this is a great advice. Um, it's a challenging time, and I think that there are ways for us to make the most of it and, and change how we're thinking um, yeah. and, and be okay not feeling okay sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we see you, and you, you have to see yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Amira, thank you on behalf of all of the patients that Fertility Matters Canada supports, everybody here live tonight. Thank you thank for your you. time. Thank you for your continued support of our organization. It is with partners like you that allow us to continue to do this type of work and bring information and resources um, to patients across the country and now really internationally through our online platforms. Amazing. Um, it's amazing. And it is Canadian Infertility Awareness Week 2020. Our theme is We See You. Um, and we hope that as you watch, you recognize that we do see you. And um, this is an organization uh, for the patient, run by the patient. Um, and we're trying to bring content to you that's meaningful and um, we'd love your feedback and your ideas. So please reach out at, at any time and you can follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, um, and all of the events that are happening this week, you can find over on our Facebook page or on fertilitymatters.ca forward slash FMC events. Amira, thank you so much. We will be thank in touch you. and everybody have a great evening. Thank you so much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.